Hi, this is Al Williams of Sunset Hill Solutions. In this video, I'm going to be configuring Facebook and Twitter authentication for a .NET Nuke website. I'm using .NET Nuke 7.0.2, and this is the community edition of .NET Nuke. So I'm going to be implementing the authentication for Facebook and Twitter on a live website. So let me describe the um, environment that we have here. This is my production website for my company, Sunset Hill Solutions, so sunsethill.ca. I have three child portals set up in DNN that operate as top-level websites. For example, dynamicvrs.com. This is a child portal of sunsethill.ca and Springfield Genealogy Club and Echo Tree Service. These are three of the uh, many websites I have running under one instance of .NET Nuke. The one that I want to add Facebook and Twitter authentication to is the Springfield Genealogy Club. So you can see right now, if I click the login button for the Springfield Genealogy Club, that I get the standard .NET Nuke uh, login screen. And if I go to register, it's a, it's a standard .NET Nuke registration as well. So go to the main site here. I'm going to log in as the host, or as a host account. So now I'm logged in with a host account. The next step is to go into host extensions. So then I want to go to installed extensions and I want to minimize the module section and I want to have a look at the authentication systems. So you can see I do have the .NET Nuke Facebook authentication project version 7.0.2 installed and also the .NET Nuke Twitter authentication project. Now you may very well not have the latest version of the Facebook and Twitter authentication installed in your .NET Nuke website. So um, what I would do, I suggest that you check the available extensions up here and we want to find the authentication systems. What I actually had to do on this website was I had version 7.0 of the Facebook installed previously and in this list I had 7.0.2 so I just clicked on the install button for 7.0.2 so that updated the .NET Nuke Facebook and Twitter authentication projects. The next step in the process is to go back to the installed extensions tab and go to the authentication system section and we want to make sure that the Facebook and Twitter authentication methods are enabled. So I'm going to click on the edit button right here. And we can see that I previously enabled the Facebook authentication for this .NET Nuke portal. Let's do the same thing for Twitter. And it's enabled as well, so that's good. So we can, we can proceed to the next step. So far we've made sure we had the latest versions of the .NET Nuke and Facebook authentication projects installed on our .NET Nuke portal. And at this point I can log out of the main portal, sunsethill.ca. I'll close these other websites and just leave the Springfield Genealogy Club. This is the one I want to add the Facebook and Twitter authentication to. So I'm going to go ahead and log in as an administrative role here. So now I'm logged in and have access to the admin menu up here. So now from the admin menu, let's just try this again. I want to go into the advanced settings and extensions. Now for Facebook here, I want to edit the settings. This is at the um, child portal level so this isn't at the very top level now so I'm just editing the Facebook setting authentication settings for this child portal okay so now here you see it's asking me for an app ID and app secret this is where we have to go to Facebook you have to have a Facebook account and you have to um, you have to create an app on Facebook to get these two values and the next step we're gonna do is exactly that Now I'm in the developer area for Facebook. I've logged into my account and I'm at developers.facebook.com backslash apps. 
And what I want to do now is create a new app that's going to support the authentication for the Springfield Genealogy Club. So I'm going to call the Springfield Genealogy. I'm going to leave the namespace empty. It's not really applicable for what we're doing here. And I don't want to have web hosting. I'm just going to click on continue. Now I have to enter these values. Click on continue. And now I have an app set up for Springfield Genealogy and I have an app ID and app secret. Next thing I have to do is put in the app domain. Springfieldgenealogy.ca and I want oh sorry the app domain does not go there. It goes right here. So what I did was I checked the website Facebook login and I had to put the URL to the website. I can go ahead and save the changes. That's all we have to do on the Facebook side. So I've gone back into the Springfield Genealogy Club under admin extensions and I'm editing the Facebook authentication project. I've entered the app ID and app secret and I'm enabling Facebook authentication. Click on the update authentication settings. Now that I've updated the Facebook authentication settings, I can go ahead and close this window and go down to the Twitter authentication project and click on the edit icon. And as you can see for Twitter, it's asking me for the same thing in app ID and app secret. So now let's go and get the Twitter app ID and app secret, the Twitter authentication uh, information that we need. I'm going to close this window for now and go to Twitter. And I'm at dev.twitter.com backslash apps backslash new and I'm logged in with my Twitter account. So I'm going to fill in the details of um, all of these entries that are required. Alright, so I've entered Springfield Genealogy Club as a name and description. I've provided the URL to the website. A callback URL. Um, I don't think I'm going to need this, but I'm just putting the main page there. <clears throat> then you have a whole pile of information you have to agree to, and I guess I'll agree to that. And you have to enter your CAPTCHA. And I'll click this button here to create the Twitter application. And we'll see what happens. Alright, so it gives me my consumer key and consumer secret. So this is what I need for .NET Nuke. Okay, I've gone back into my .NET Nuke website and in extensions editing the Twitter authentication project. I've entered the app ID and app secret and I've enabled Twitter authentication. I'm going to go ahead and update the settings. Let's review what we've uh, done so far. We logged in as the host to the parent portal for this website. Made sure we had the latest version of the .NET Nuke and Twitter authentication projects installed and we enabled them at the host or at the uh, parent portal level. The next thing we did was we logged into the, the child site which was the Springfield Genealogy Club. We went into admin, advanced settings, and extensions and in there we scroll down to the authentication systems section we went and edited the Facebook authentication project we obtained an app ID and app secret from Facebook and we enabled the provider and for Twitter we did the same thing let's just make sure that we actually did save those credentials yes they're there we can close this so the next thing we want to do we go back to the home page I'm going to log out. So now I'm at the home page. I'm not logged in as the administrator. So let me show you what I've done here. On the register page, I've set that up to be a sp uh, specific page on the site. So I've added some information here why register with the club. And I mentioned you can either fill in the registration below or sign in with your Facebook or Twitter account. So they click on this link or either of these two icons they'll be taking to the login page 
or they can fill in the standard .NET Nuke registration. So it's really up to the to the end user. Let's just go ahead and click on this link. So this brings me to the login page, the same as if I'd clicked on login up here. So now you see we have the login with Facebook and the sign in with Twitter. Let's try this out and see if it works. First, we'll try the sign in with Twitter. So it will ask your users to authorize um, this application for um, logging into the Springfield Genealogy Club. So you want to give Twitter the authorization to log you in. So you click on Authorize App. So now it's redirecting back to the application. And we get an error. So you'll notice we got an error when it Twitter redirected us back to the website. And I was able to determine by logging in as the administrator and going to the event viewer that the error was when .NET Nuke tried to send an email to the registered user after they registered um, using Twitter authentication because the exception is the parameter two cannot be an empty string. So this could very well be a, it could be a bug with DNN, I'm not sure. The important thing to note though, even though it threw that error after it redirected back from Twitter, was that when I clicked on login again, it automatically logged me in. So let's just try that again. So let's make sure at the very least that the Twitter authentication works. So I'm going to go ahead and click on login up here. Since I'm already registered, or sorry, since I'm already logged into Twitter on this machine, if I click on login, it should be all I need to do. And indeed, yes, it has logged me in as user Sunset Hill, which is my Twitter username. So we've proven that the Twitter authentication does work with .NET Nuke. What .NET Nuke does in fact do when a user registers or logs into the site with a Twitter account, it creates a user profile in the database with the Twitter username. It does the same thing for Facebook, except it uses your the user's email address for Facebook. And just to make sure it works with Facebook, we'll go ahead and, and use the Facebook option. I'll click on login with Facebook. And now, brings up the Facebook login page put in my email address and password and click on login and I can save the device or not save it. This is a Facebook thing I'll say don't save so it should redirect me back now. Okay now it's going to ask me if, if it wants Springfield Genealogy to access Facebook I'll say okay. So now it's redirected me back to springfieldgenealogy.ca and in fact it added added my Facebook profile as a user account to this website. We didn't get an error with the Facebook authentication like we did with the Twitter one initially. So Facebook appears to be a bit smoother. Twitter does work but I got that error the first time that I that I tried using the Twitter authentication. So this was Al Williams at Sunset Hill Solutions. I hope if you intend on implementing Twitter or Facebook authentication on your .NET Nuke website that this video helps you out a little bit. Thanks for watching.